the whole goal of this whole thing is this this whole business has got way out of hand. I wanted to prove to the Tampa Bay Rays primarily that I could develop players. But the whole goal was to just prove that it worked in pro ball, but because no one pulled the trigger, so as a result, I had to do it myself. Driveline Baseball is a multi-million dollar company, and it shouldn't be. This is something where Major League Baseball teams very badly failed. But they don't quite understand how, where it came from. If they did, they would understand better that they are definitely wrong in doubting who we are. There's Kyle taking his good old time, coming up to bat. Yeah, I come from a nuclear family, still together. My mother is Japanese, my father is Irish Catholic. Kind of middle class, below middle class, average um, family growing up in America. Swings, good hit. Parma is a very blue collar suburb of Cleveland. It's uh, people definitely work for what they have. It's a lot of full-time kind of grinder city in a lot of ways. Well, being the firstborn, I think socially he was a little behind, which was probably typical for me too. Um, he was, um, well, he was a good role model because he was a great student. He he does have a tendency though to be uh, very independent. So um, you know, I probably mistook that sometimes for being um, distant from his brothers, but I think that he was just always, he was born independent. Yeah, although he never really stood out as being out of the crowd, but he wanted to develop his own personality, like was an independent thinker. He was kind of the, like, the, the center spoke, like there was there was a lot, of, a lot of friends that always hung out together, but it always seemed to go through Kyle. He was like the main, the main catalyst of everything. And you know, anytime something, something crazy, some story, Kyle's always involved, one, one, way, one way or another. So, Kyle's never been afraid of anything. He was always out there and didn't care what anybody thought of him. Because in Kyle's mind, I feel like, if anybody thought less of him, he would find a way to prove them wrong. And he's never been the kind of person that would ever take like maybe a criticizing, crit, like criticizing feedback, and be like, oh yeah, you know what? Maybe maybe I have to sit around and think about this. Maybe I'm not the kind of person I think I am. I think Kyle has always known who he is. I think he needed to have a positive um, environment in order to facilitate all of that. Yeah, high school was interesting because I started to become agnostic. Uh, starting to be around people that didn't believe necessarily in Christianity and such, which was more than just religion, right? It made me think about my thought processes. What else do I take for granted? What else do I think is true that might not be true? Uh, and that made me think a lot about the world in general. So I became a lot more scientific of a thinker throughout high school. I think that was a big transition for me. The biggest thing I remember about his academics was he was extremely good at problem solving, critical thinking skills, and uh, he, he could really break things down into the, its nuts and bolts. That's when he was interested in something. That was one of his weaknesses, being focused sometimes if he wasn't interested. If he was interested, he was laser sharp on it though. So you had to keep him challenged. That was the big thing. And I think through the high school years, he was just trying to figure out who he was. And then when he went to college for a couple of years, he instantly realized that he was even, not, not so much above that, but it did stimulate him to where he wanted to be. And 
Yeah, and so I was working full time the entire time I was going to school full time, which was hard, and living in the dorms. So it was a tough situation for me to watch my friends have a lot more fun and do things, and it just, uh, I didn't have a lot of good balance in my life at the time. And that contributed to social anxiety, uh, anxiety disorder, and depression that I was suffering from, and really had been since I was 12, and just never really got checked out. So I remember dropping out when I was 20, um, terrified that my parents were gonna disown me, I moved home and uh, continued working full time and kind of started making plans for what was going to be next in my life. So here's the thing about Kyle, he's an incredibly smart individual. Uh, he's a very passionate individual about the things he's passionate about, but he has to find those passions. It was all about finding the thing that he was going to focus that intelligence, that passion and that drive on. And once he found it, it was no question he was going to be successful. I really didn't have much plan for what to do next or have a dream until I saw Rounders, the movie. I was super interested in gambling. I was super interested in quantitative stuff. This showed a, that there was a real underside. There was a real community to playing professional poker and it existed in New York and it existed in places that you saw every day but you didn't realize were backroom poker places that people were making hundreds of thousands of dollars playing a game. And so I vowed to become good at gambling and work a job until then. So that's, uh, that's when I found, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. Kyle and I met in the uh, now obsolete social media realm of the Live Journal. And you know, we were online friends for a couple years and you know, one thing led to another, we started chatting, and we somehow fell in love, and it's so long ago that that doesn't even make sense to me anymore, but it happened. Eventually, he saved up a bunch of money and moved out to Seattle. At that time, I was working for PokerStar still for a couple months. Um, but then I met some people out here doing the online casino gambling. One of them lived in Seattle. We decided to meet up and we became partners in a business together, basically beating online casinos. So we went, we went into business together. We got a closet that was 400 square feet in uh, Magnolia and we would work full time just beating the internet out of its money. When you give kids that grew up without resources and without that kind of money, instant access to millions of dollars and they become virtual millionaires that are printing, literally printing money online. That's not something a 23 year old who grows up without a lot of money understands how to deal with. And so it's buying cars, it's buying you know, clothes, it's, it's, it's gambling, it's flying to Vegas every month, it's stupid stuff you know, that you spend your money on that I have nothing to show for except for some stories now. And it all came crashing down when the Unlawful Internet Gambling Enforcement Act was passed. It became known as Black Friday when the Justice Department seized Full Tilt Poker's operations and froze player accounts. I think this is uncharted territory for the first time player monies have been seized. The Towards the end of that I realized I needed to get a job. So I started applying for some jobs and ended up at Microsoft. And so then I started off my uh, kind of my my real employment <laughs> down the line. So that's kind of how I became a software developer and started thinking about things uh, in a legal way, kind of disengaging from the gambling side. When you have a wife, when you have at least one kid potentially on the way or already born, in life sometimes you have to do some things you don't want to do. That was, a, that was a stage for him where he was still searching. And that's why I said it wasn't a matter of if, it was a matter of when. It, I, I know that it was a matter of what and when, and it wasn't going to be that. He was not going to do that the rest of his life. We didn't know what he was going to find. For the software stuff, he was so unhappy. Baseball was always this thing in the background ever since he first moved here. When, when he moved to Seattle, he didn't know anyone else in Seattle. So one of the first things I did is I was like, well, you like baseball, why don't you coach a Little League team? I was really excited by the idea of quantitatively analyzing baseball. Hey, 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 hey. 
So our little league team walked a lot. We hit the power. It was a lot of fun. And then I, from there, I became interested in how to train um, players. How do you actually get them better? Um, there were, you know, there were times I wish that I had had better guidance on how to actually become better at anything. It's following me. It's going. It was always really interesting to me to how can I help these kids get better, and that there was a science behind it. You know, there's a science behind psychology and human development, uh, but then also on the skill side, like how do we actually get these guys better? What makes them throw faster? What makes them not hurt themselves? What makes them hit the ball farther? And so I started researching a ton of that stuff online, and I started very nerdy. I started with the medical journals, and I started with peer-reviewed research, and certainly there must be some science out there on how to actually get players better. And it turns out that there really wasn't a lot. So that's kind of how Driveland really started. Like I knew I needed to collect some first party data and I built a biomechanics lab with some high speed cameras that were becoming available on the market. So the barn was, it was a chicken wire enclosed strength facility with batting cages and high speed cameras and some weighted balls that we started to use right around then. This is our weighted baseball you know, velocity kit that we use. We have stuff as heavy as these duct tape covered six-pound balls. Started using weighted balls purely by luck. Um, a friend of mine at the time dropped off a set of weighted balls, and he said that the company that he ordered them ordered something else from and sent him weighted balls on accident. And so when I read these studies about how they could be effective in developing throwing and pitching velocity, I figured that's enough for me to experiment, but let's document the process, you know, let's learn from some physical therapists, will they really hurt someone's arm, you know, what are the markers that we can check? So a physical therapist named Dr. Andy Lodato um, told me how to measure for glenohumeral internal uh, rotation deficit, so GERD, and a few other kind of markers. And from there, we did a lot of analysis, uh, and sure enough, these things develop fastball velocity really well, um, and there were no real deleterious effects on um, range of motion or anything like that. And uh, the results were undeniably, undeniably huge. And so then that's kind of how we developed the weighted ball training off of that. Like what, if that's good, what's better? Can we do different things with them instead of just throwing them? You know, and uh, that's how it all started. I don't think at the time I realized the extent of how depressed he was because, I mean, I also had a lot going on obviously at that time and he didn't really impress that upon me as part of the conversation, but he was like, you know, we need to talk. And he said, you know, I want to do this, I want to quit my job and do baseball full time. And, you know, we just had this new mortgage and this baby and he wants to quit his job, which is like probably at least 75% of our household income. And it was, not gonna lie, horrible. <laughs> it was really hard. You know, we were living paycheck to paycheck and there was no room for anything frivolous. And I remember a couple times having a conversation with him being like, okay, like this is your dream and this is what you wanna do, but like, what is the timeline on you saying, okay, this is not gonna work? Like, how long do we try before we give up? But I don't know if he ever gave me a straight answer on that. Hey everybody out there, this is Kyle with Driveline Baseball. Just wanted to give you a quick look at what we've got done in a month here at our new facility. Ninety-three point seven. Good day. It's not a bad day. Ninety-nine. Five eight.
possibility. I'm going to tell you right now, there's a program out in Seattle. It's called Driveline. It works. Kyle Bodie is with Driveline Baseball, a uh, pitching performance facility. It's also called a data-centric approach to training, and he joins us now. And it's not very often that you meet someone that's like that, that you can really, like you really get that sense from them that like, this guy is gonna be good no matter what happens. And it was very clear in meeting Kyle and talking to him, even in the beginning, when I first met him in, in the barn at the Texas Baseball Ranch, like it was very, very clear to me that like, Kyle was gonna be good at whatever he chose to do. Before I started, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect. They were still very new and I thought that Kyle was like very controversial and like abrasive. So I thought maybe, you know, like that was gonna be a problem, but I don't think it is. And as soon as I got here and I met Kyle and Mike and, and the rest of the crew, I knew that they're always gonna keep growing. I think it's very important when you're trying to revolutionize an industry that you, if you don't come from complete ignorance to it, that you at least bring some people in with complete ignorance to it. Because they can look at the overall picture. They can see the forest instead of the trees, and they can say, well, why do you do this? That seems stupid. And then you sit there for a second, well, man, I never really thought about that, but you're right, that is stupid. Let's just not do that anymore. I don't have like a, sales pitch. I'm not trying to convince anyone it's the right way. I just know that I'm right and they're not. We're the people that are going to change player development and uh, that's what drives me every day to get up is to keep working on that vision. The march to inevitability which means um, it's only a matter of time before we really win and uh, the harder I work the faster we get there. That's really all there is to it.